Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Daniel chapter 1. I was going to cover every single verse in the Bible where it talks about dreams, but a lot of it really doesn't seem applicable. So, uh, just know that a lot of times the important characters in the Bible were giving understanding and wisdom in dreams and visions as Abraham and Jacob and Joseph and in this it's Daniel. Daniel was uh, said that he was dearly beloved I believe by Gabriel I believe Gabriel told him he was dearly beloved Daniel had a good spirit he prayed like three times a day I guess we could learn a lot from him huh all right Daniel chapter 1 In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And uh, just so you know, the Lord was not happy with Judah. Not happy at all. So he's going to use the king of Babylon to spank Judah, so to speak. Verse 2, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Uh, master of the eunuchs. Yeah, that means um, they did a little snip snip to the, uh, the men, if you catch my drift. Now, the thing is, when you have servants running around, and you got all the king's wives running around. You don't want the king's wives messing with the king's servants, so you do a little snip snip and then don't have to worry about that problem, right? So I don't see anywhere in the Bible where Daniel had children. That would have been the reason why. that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So you better believe the king's seed his children got an excellent education in Judah. So now they're going to take the cream of the crop, so to speak, from Judah and have them in the king of Babylon's court. Verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat. Probably pork, right? and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now, they're going to have to go from learn, you know, knowing Hebrew to knowing uh, whatever the Babylonian language was. It takes about three years to learn a language with a fairly fair degree of competency. Verse 6, now among these were of the children of Judah, 
Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Az Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, probably pork, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So what does he say? Prove thy servants. In other words, test us. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Uh, what is pulse? And basically, it's sprouts. It's a vegetarian type uh, meal, to the best of my knowledge. And water to drink. They didn't want to drink the, the wine. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but Mr. Universe one year, the guy that won the Mr. Universe, I don't remember exactly what year it was. Maybe it was in the 80s. Uh, he was a vegetarian, you know, bodybuilder. So, you know, they didn't want to eat the pork, I guess. And pork is not healthy. It's, you know, not eating pork is not a salvational thing, but it's not a healthy meat. I know they call it the other white meat, but uh, it's not a healthy meat. I read a report by a doctor that became a Christian after he did a big study on the health and diet laws in the Bible, and, and he was astounded that there was a valid scientific reason behind every single health and diet law in the Bible. And when he started researching pork, he was like, there's a hundred known diseases that pork transmits to man. And 200 suspected, but they haven't done the research to uh, ascertain whether or not that's true or not. And cooking gets rid of most of them, but not all of them. So, I don't know. Uh, you know, is it a salvation thing? No. But is it a health thing? Yes. So, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. In other words, take a look at our complexions. See how we look. And the countenance of the children that eat that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. In other words, check us out, see how we look compared to everybody else, and uh, whatever you think is best will abide by your decision. Verse 14. That's the Bob translation. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So in other words, their uh, faces looked better. Thus, Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these children, God gave them knowledge. Okay, the Hebrew kids God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams very important that's going to come back up 
Matter of fact, book of Daniel is, there's a lot of end time prophecy in Daniel. It's a very, my opinion, it's one of the most difficult books in the Bible. I don't, I do not feel that I'm qualified to teach this properly because there's a lot of things in here I don't understand. I imagine when the time comes, it'll be revealed. But until then, everybody, it's just a private interpretation, I guess. You know, if I don't get it 100% or at least 90-something percent, I, I try not to, I try to stay away from it because, you know, I don't want to be ever be wrong teaching the Bible and being wrong. So I would rather say, hey, I don't know, but this is my guess. So, Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. So, yeah, if you're uh, taking your astrology, you're trying to guide your life by the stars, well, maybe you should guide your life by the commandments of the one who created the stars instead of the creation of the stars. That's what astrology is. Verse 21. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. All righty, that covers Daniel chapter 1. So the point is, Daniel had knowledge and wisdom in dreams and visions. And that's going to serve him very well in the next few chapters. So... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.